Subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. Let me turn to inflation now. The sharp acceleration in headline CPI inflation in March 2022 to 7% was propelled in particular by food inflation uh, by food inflation due to the impact of adverse spillovers from unprecedented high global food prices. Nine out of the 12 food subgroups registered an increase in inflation in the month of March. High frequency price indicators for April indicate the persistence of food, food price pressures. Simultaneously, the direct impact of increases in domestic pump prices of petroleum products beginning the second fortnight of March is feeding into code inflation prints and is expected to have intensified in April. Looking ahead, food inflation pressures are likely to continue. Food price indices of the Food and Agriculture Organization, that is FAO, and the World Bank touched historical highs in March and remain elevated. Spillovers from global wheat shortages are impacting domestic prices, even though domestic supply remains comfortable. Prices of edible oils may firm up further due to export restrictions by key producing countries and the loss of sunflower oil output due to the war. Elevated feed costs are translating into escalation in poultry, milk, and dairy product prices. International crude oil prices continue to hover above US dollar 100 per barrel, and this is prompting pass through to domestic pump prices. The risks of unprecedented input cost pressures translating into yet another round of price increases for processed food, non food manufactured products, and services are now more potent than before. This could strengthen corporate pricing power if margins get squeezed inordinately. To sum up, the strengthening of inflationary pressures in sync with persistence of adverse global price shocks poses upward risks to inflation trajectory presented in April MPC resolution. In these circumstances, it is necessary for monetary policy to focus on withdrawal of accommodation. It may be recalled that in response to the pandemic, monetary policy had shifted gears to an ultra accommodative mode with a large reduction of 75 basis points in the repo rate on March 27, 2020, followed by another reduction of 40 basis points on 22nd May 2020. Accordingly, the decision of the MPC today to raise policy repo rate by 40 basis points to 4.4%, 4.40% may be seen as a reversal of the rate action of May 2000, of May 22, 2020. In keeping with the announced stance of withdrawal of accommodation set out in April, 2022. So in other words, in last month, we had set out a stance of withdrawal of accommodation and today's decision should be seen as a continuation of that announcement. We had also said last month that uh, the uh, situation is constantly changing, fast changing, and our actions will be tailored accordingly. And uh, what we are doing is to reverse the increase of 40 basis points. Uh, the, the sorry, the reduction of 40 basis points in the repo rate, which was done three year, or in two years ago in uh, May 2020. We are just reversing that 40 basis points today. And this is precisely in line with the stance of withdrawal of accommodation, which was set out in last month's MPC statement. Therefore, in keeping with the stance of withdrawal of accommodation and in line with the earlier announcement of gradual withdrawal of liquidity over a multi-year time frame, it has been decided to increase the cash reserve ratio, CRR, by 50 basis points, that is 50, 50 basis points to 4.5% of net demand and time liabilities, that is NDTL, 
effective from the fortnight beginning 21st May 2022. The withdrawal of liquidity through this increase in the CRR would be of the order of Rs 87,000 crore. Sustained high inflation inevitably hurts savings, investment, competitiveness and output growth. It has pronounced adverse effects on the poorer segments of the population by eroding their purchasing power. I would therefore like to emphasize, I repeat, I would therefore like to emphasize that our monetary policy actions today aimed at lowering inflation and anchoring inflation expectations will strengthen and consolidate the medium term growth prospects of the economy. The policy decisions of today are aimed at containing inflation spike, are aimed at re-anchoring the inflation expectations. At the same time, the policy will eventually result in strengthening and consolidating the medium term growth prospects for the economy. Because a high inflation, as is known very well to everyone, is detrimental to economic growth. So therefore, our decision should be seen as growth positive. We remain mindful of the possible near-term impact of higher interest rates on output. Our actions will therefore be calibrated. I would like to further stress that monetary policy still remains accommodative and our approach will be to focus on a careful and calibrated withdrawal of pandemic-related extraordinary accommodation, keeping in mind the inflation growth dynamics. It is reiterated that the RBI will ensure adequate liquidity in the system to meet the productive requirements of the economy in support of credit offtake and growth. Let me now conclude. The last two years are a saga of our determined fight against the daunting challenges posed by the pandemic and now the war. We rose to these challenges to safeguard the economy and the financial system from a maelstrom of shocks. We now stand at a crucial juncture once again. We in the RBI remain steadfast in our commitment to con contain inflation and support growth. Inflation must be tamed in order to keep the Indian economy resolute on its course to sustainable and inclusive growth. The biggest contribution to overall macroeconomic and financial stability, as well as sustained sustainable growth, would come from our effort to maintain price stability. Let me repeat this sentence, which is very important. The biggest contribution to overall macroeconomic and financial stability, as well as sustainable growth, would come from our effort to maintain price stability. As several storms hit together, our actions today are important steps to steady the ship. We remain watchful of the incoming data and information to constantly reassess the situation and the outlook. We will be proactive and flexible in our approach. Despite challenges, it is comforting to note that the fundamentals of our economy remain strong and we are well placed to deal with the situation emanating from the global developments. In fact, the IMF has uh, recently pointed out that the macroeconomic management of the pandemic in India has resulted in a strong recovery and the country is in a good position to face the current external shock. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalism.